Hey guys, welcome to this edition of Virtual Sunday School. Uh, this week we're looking at Voyage of the Dawn Treader from the Narnia series, the last of, of the movies. And uh, we're looking at Romans 12, just a few verses there in Romans 12 as we think in terms of the spiritual development of the characters and it, this movie really focuses on the maturity, spiritual maturity of these characters. I recognize that some of you are not able still to come and that's why we do this video. You can watch this on Disney Plus. All three movies are on Disney Plus. If you've been keeping up with that way, that's great. And if not, if it may be a, a great binge uh, opportunity for you before you head back to school for those that are going to school uh, when you have to go back to four days a week. Uh, take, take an opportunity to watch these, catch up with uh, everything we've been doing in the Narnia series. So we looked at each passage here in Romans chapter 12, starting with verse 9, and we looked piece by piece this week uh, as we went through it. This first slide, love must be sincere, uh, is the first verse that we looked at. Each time I asked this question, we looked at a verse, what does this mean? And so this week we discussed it uh, as a youth group, the different verses that we went over. And uh, so you may want to pause, think about, uh, meditate on some of these verses, or talk with your parents about some of these verses if you weren't able to be in the Sunday school setting, uh, just to kind of process this a bit. So the first being love must be sincere. Sincere means free from pretense or deceit, proceeding from genuine feelings. And so our love for Christ needs to be genuine. It needs to come deep from within us and be a genuine thing and not just a, a, a quickie, hey, I love you kind of concept to God. Sometimes we, we treat uh, others that way. Hey, I love you, and we really don't necessarily mean it. Uh, it, it needs to come from the heart. One church, we were loading up in the vans. I'd been there, I don't know, a few months and I uh, looked at some of the kids in the van. I said, man, I love you. And one of the girls looked at me and said, do you really love us? I mean, how can you love us? And you haven't been here that long. And, and she caught me in that word of just kind of throwing out that word because I did like these kids and I, I was learning to care about these students, but love probably had not had enough time to really develop a love for them individually. I loved youth ministry. I loved teenagers, but to love them individually, I probably didn't have time for that. And she kind of called me out on that. Why? Because love must be sincere. And when we're thinking about the love for God, it must be sincere. The next verse, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. For us to despise the things that are evil, to hate those things, not just dislike, not just kind of try to stay away, but hate those things that are evil. And we ask kind of what are some of the evil things that are out there? And there's lots of things you can make a list of, of what you would feel is evil around you, uh, but we're to hate that and then cling to, let's hold on to, hold fast to those things that are good. Uh, so what are the good things? Well, one is God. God is good. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ, your salvation, your testimony, uh, your character. Those are some good things that you should hold on to, cherish, uh, and keep close to you and not let Satan steal away. So your character. And then we talked in the student ministry for, about this verse. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. To be devoted to one another in love, for us to commit to each other because of the love of Christ in us, that we're going to love each other as a youth group and care about each other as a youth group. Uh, how important that is for us to develop that kind of love for each other. And that's one of the, the two great commandments, love God and love others. And the first aspect of loving others is loving others that are around you, that are like you, that are serving the same Christ as you do, even before you try to love your enemies, which we're commanded to do too. So love one another. Be loving and kind to each other. And kind of a definition of that, honor one another above yourselves. This, this aspect of honoring others. How do you honor others? How do you lift them up above yourself? Well, one of those things is, is making sure that when you're coming down, when we do finally get back to Sunday school and you're coming to get a donut, that you're not rushing in front of other people, knocking them down to get your special donut. Be okay with the donuts that's left because you want to honor other people. Uh, making sure that you're not necessarily trying to save your seat in the van and, and throw somebody else out. You know, I've seen that happen before. Oh, no, you're a middle schooler. you got to get out from a high schooler because this is our van. You know, but loving people, caring about people. Uh, I, I gave an example that when I was in youth group, 
then we would go to camp. I would end up rooming with whoever. I didn't necessarily try to make sure I roomed with my best friend. I was willing to be open to the, that student who hadn't really connected as well and room with them. I got to know some other guys that way by rooming with somebody different at camp each year. And then I brought up to the students that you know, what's easier to invite your friends to? Now, you want your friends to come to know Christ, but what's easier to invite your friends to? Come to our youth group so you can hear about Jesus uh, and his saving power for your life. Or is it easier to say, come to our youth group because it's a loving, caring, kind place. It's a safe place, and you know that people love each other to the point that it's a safe place to invite your friends. When your friends are here, then they're going to hear the gospel, and they're going to be loved on by students as well as the leadership, and then hear the gospel of the love of Jesus. So they're going to see love in action. They're going to hear about love in action through Jesus and have an opportunity to come to Christ as Lord and Savior. And I still think that's the best way, more than big promotions and those kind of things, to have a youth group that loves and cares for each other, that's open to love and care for others, that you can invite and your friends can invite their friends to. And so we kind of park there uh, this week as we kind of went through these few verses. We end up kind of finishing up here. There are still quite a few verses in Romans 12 that we didn't go over, but the essence of what we wanted, and I'm going to kind of park here because I'll try to keep this pretty short. The essence of what we wanted to do is, is, is begin to get this mindset that the voyage of the Dawn Treader, the purpose of that was to watch uh, the, the characters, Edmund and Lucy and Eustace, develop in their faith, develop character traits of faith as they go through some tests or challenges and trials. We'll be looking in the weeks to come at Lucy's travels, Eustace's travels, and Edmund's travels in this. So we're going to take several weeks and look at those, but I wanted to kind of give an over broad view of we're called to come to Christ as Lord and Savior, and then from that begin this discipleship journey to grow to be more like Christ. And so that was our challenge this week is for you to grow to be more like Christ, for you to allow the love of Christ to infuse you and it change how you respond to others. So as we finish up this, finish reading this chapter, Romans chapter 12. Kind of read through that and let God kind of process in your heart uh, the aspects of that. I want to remind you in a way of announcements that we do uh, have volleyball now. We are playing outside. So if the inside issue is, is your issue uh, and you can meet outside and your parents are okay with that, we're going to be playing volleyball, practicing outside and playing outside. Uh, we canceled practice this week because it was too cold, but we start practice next week then at 5.30 on Tuesdays. And then we'll start games right after Easter and all games will be on Saturdays. And we'll play two games a Saturday here at our church. So everything's at Villa Heights outside. God has blessed us with such a wonderful yard out there, uh, field to be able to play in. And so we're, gonna, we're hosting the games here at Villa Heights. We'd love to have you come out if you'd like to play uh, this coming Tuesday at 530. Now I finish with, if you need me for anything, feel free to text me, feel free to make connection to me, uh, call me, I'm available to you, and, and I realize that there's coming a day, hopefully not too long, that we begin to actually all get back together, that we end up being able to get uh, and hang out together, study the Bible together, play together, uh, that that's not too far down the road. Uh, miss you guys that aren't able to come, I wish that I could just fix it so you could. God bless and thanks for watching.